Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to work with tab controls and tabs in WPF using the model view, view model pattern. So we have two goals. One is we have a basic application where if I click my new tab button, I want to be able to add tabs to the tab control. Two, I want to be able to close tabs using a button within the tab header, such as an X icon or something of sorts. And three, I want to be able to work with various types of tab content. So we're going to solve all of that. Now real briefly, this is our basic view model behind this window. We just have our new tab command and a method which we'll fill in with some logic here in a moment. So the first thing we need to do is define a tab abstraction that we want to work with. And we're going to start with an interface and we're going to call that iTab. And we need the basic things that are required to work with a tab. The first one being a name, which will get displayed in the tab header. The second one being the command that will actually close the tab. And lastly, the event that the close command will actually raise. Like so. Next, we want to reuse code because we're going to have various types of tab content. So we're going to create an abstract class. And our close command is pretty straightforward. It's just going to raise the closed requested event. And I've included action command in the project. This will be similar to a delegate command. Pretty straightforward. So now that we have our basic scaffolding or our abstraction of a tab, we need to expose the tab content for our tab control and we're going to do that through a tabs property. So this will be a generic collection of iTab and this will actually underneath be a observable collection so WPF can listen to the collection property changing notifications. Okay. So now that we have that in place, we can go back to our tabs control and set the item source to our tabs property. And then we need to tell the tab control how to display these tabs. So the first thing is we're going to create the template for the actual items which represent the tab headers. And this will be the item template. And here we're going to use a data template. And this data template will have a text block and a link uh, that when clicked will basically close the tab. And this will be, again, our iTab interface. And we're going to have just a simple text block. And we'll bind this to our name property on our tab. And then for our hyperlink, this will just execute the close command. And we'll use an X in place of a, some sort of graphic. So that's going to tell us how to display the tab headers. Now we need to tell the tab control how to display the actual content. So to do this, again, we're going to use data templates, but we're going to include them as resources. And this will avoid having to write a C-sharp class that derives from a template selector, essentially, where we can do all of this in XAML. So we're just going to create a data template. We're going to do it a data type. Now we've not created this yet, but we're going to make a very basic example. We're going to use a date tab and we'll create that here in a moment. And we'll have a date tab view, which we'll also create in a moment. So let's start with our date tab and we'll just do this up here for now, which will be very straightforward. And this will inherit our tab class. And very simple, we're going to set the name of our tab to the current date and time, like so. Now we need the view 
which will be a WPF user control. And we're just going to call this date tab view. And very similar, we're going to take a text block and we're just going to go ahead and display the name of the tab here as well. So nothing fancy. Now we can wire these up in our XAML in our main window. And we'll have all that in place. Now so far all we've done is wrote enough code where if we were to have a tab in the tabs collection, and let's go ahead and add our date tab, the application will be able to display that. So here we have in our tab header our name. If I were to click on that, we have our content, and I can click this button and it would invoke the close command event. Now we've not done anything to listen in on that yet to be able to close the tab, so we're gonna do that next. So the first thing that we need to do is actually create a event handler for when the underlying collection changes. So we're going to move this to a class level member. And then we're going to subscribe to the collection changed event. And then of course set our tabs property to that value. Now in here, as tabs are added or removed, we need to basically subscribe and unsubscribe to the closed requested event. So the way we're gonna do that is basically say, if the action is that the tab is added, and typically it'll be one item, we're going to subscribe to close requested event like so. And in the case that it's removed from the collection, we're going to do the same thing, except this will be an old item. And we're going to unsubscribe from the event. And we're going to create these like so. And we'll go ahead and move this up. Like there. And then here, when the tab is requesting that it should be closed, we're going to remove it from the tab collection. And this will be the sender, essentially. Pretty straightforward. And once that item is removed from the collection through WPF's binding, it will automatically remove it from the item source. So if we were to run this again, and actually we need to wire this button up real quick, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna say tabs add new date tab, just as an example. So there's our tab. I can click on it and I can click the close event and it removes the tab. And of course, if I needed to work with different kinds of tabs, I can come in here and create another tab class and do the same thing. I can add whatever properties and things I need and then create another view that would display that particular kind of tab. And then I would add that as a resource to the tab control. So then it would know how to take a time tab view model and display it as a time tab view. So you'll have multiple data templates in here for the different kinds of tabs you want to display. So that's it. That's how you work with tab controls and tabs in WPF and MVVM. I've also included in the project a example unit test, of course, on how you might write unit tests for tab functionality. In this case, I did one for removing the tab. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, definitely give a thumbs up below.